Technology is transforming corporate treasury and corporate teams need to get ready for the future. Working in isolation has never been good, right? But now with the business becoming the driver for change, treasury needs to adapt. Hello and welcome to this podcast for Treasury Today and Standard Chartered. I'm Sarah Rundell and in this first episode of a series of three podcasts, I'll be talking to Standard Chartered transaction banking experts, Steve Pearman and Marion Reuter. Together, we'll be exploring these changes and what treasurers can do to make sure they are prepared. Marion and Steve will discuss how language like APIs and future proofing have become commonplace and explain what these terms mean for Treasury's bread and butter processes like liquidity management and payments. They will also discuss what it takes to successfully drive a digital transformation and talk about how digitization is helping companies meet new regulatory demands. I'm joined now by Marion, who is Regional Head of Transaction Banking Sales for Europe, and Steve, who is Head of Cash Product UK. Thank you both for joining me today and welcome. Thanks, Sarah. Great to be here. Yes, thanks, Sarah. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Steve, can you begin by setting the scene, outlining in what key areas technology is transforming corporate treasury and how? So for me, the key areas in technology that's uh, transforming uh, corporates is the the move to speed and quality of data. Speed because everything is becoming more and more real time in the payments and cash management world and quality of data because the data is becoming richer and more available for analytical purposes. So a treasurer really needs to think about what he's going to use that data for, for managing his own business, but also for helping the business manage their Uh, their business. Thank you for that, Steve. Marion, people talk about a future-proof treasury. What exactly is this? For me, this has two elements. I think one is the technology element that we've already started talking about. The other one is is the human element. Let me start with the, the human element. I think in the past, treasury has been pretty much on their own, taking strategic decisions for for the companies. While in future, based on what Steve already said, business and everything becoming much more real time, business and treasury need to get much closer together. And the treasury also needs to have a much better understanding of what's going on in the business and become much more agile and adjust to any new things in the market, especially with regards to new payments and, and collection methods. Instant payments is one thing, online collections, or just generally COVID has shown that markets can change very quickly. And also treasury needs to react to these disruptions much, much quicker as things become less predictable in in a way. So this is very important um, for for treasury and business to get closer together, to to have this agility and to also adjust any any funding needs much more um, flexibly and and ad hoc than in the past when this was very much planned out. Then the second element is is on technology. Uh, Treasury and all the companies need to be be ready to have systems. Multi-banking is much more important than ever with with real-time information. But slightly linking this human and technology um, element If you have the systems that can give you all the real-time information, the treasury people will not be in the office 24-7. So your system need to be, have the right level of automation and and be as um, self-sufficient as possible, if I may say so, on producing information, reporting to trigger decisions that are needed by humans for funding, for example. Yes, yes. Steve, would you like to add, add anything there? Uh, I would tend to agree with uh, Marion. Um, I think it's all about having the agile and flexible technology for a treasurer to understand how he's the influence of the business changing as they adapt to the e-commerce market uh, and, and see some of the business models adapting and needing more real-time information and more data to process their transactions. So it's key that he has access to the different platforms, being able to adapt quickly and be flexible in how he gets and uh, distributes the information. Much of this technological transformation is being driven by APIs. Steve, could you explain how corporate treasury can integrate them and what they offer around liquidity management and payments, cash flows, 
reporting and efficiencies. Yeah, sure. I mean, I would say that APIs are just the uh, ability to interact on a real-time basis. So I far rather like talking about, you know, the use of real-time data. But uh, having that real-time data and the rich data that the API will, will provide to you, the treasure, will allow this ability to process things as they go rather than wait for certain batch transactions. So some of the examples of real-time data would be to update liquidity positions in a much more interactive way, being able to fund their positions close to real time rather than certain cut-off times perhaps they are restricted to today. Real-time reconciliation receivables to move that into working capital. So as transactions arrive throughout the day, being able to reconcile that immediately uh, and then say that that is ticked off and can be moved into the working capital is another advantage. And then the intraday cash management across their holistic bank set. Um, I think Marion alluded to this multi-banking move, and it's really understanding and getting a group grip of all your bank positions globally and real time uh, is certainly a move we see. And that overlaps into the fact that you now see different payment types. This isn't just about cross-border wires and, and the actual balances with more and more payment types being used both on the sending side, but also on the recipient and uh, receivable side, I think it's important that that source of real-time data is, is consumed and uh, used well. Marion, over to you. What else can you tell us about APIs? APIs are absolutely the way forward into this new real-time world and also help on the multi-banking angle. But I would say the challenging piece today is still that APIs, to a certain extent, are still bank or even system-specific today. So clients need to find a way to have this set up in, in a uniform and automated way so that their systems um, are picking up the, the details from, from different bank providers or, or system providers. So. Um, while it is leading to process automation, this, I think, is key to actually use it to the right extent. And as, the, as Steve said, what, what I mainly hear from clients today, they use APIs to get the real-time information, but also for automation around report generation. For example, you know, they, they get the details and then the, the systems help them to generate a report for the legal entities, um, information and decision on automatic funding and repatriation, for example. Thank you for that, Marion. I'd now like to talk about digitization in supply chains. How is technology improving visibility in the supply chain, boosting working capital and treasury's ability to forecast and make decisions? How significant are AI and blockchain-based trade finance solutions? Steve, what can you tell us about this? I think technology is definitely improving the supply chain visibility in terms of giving treasurers improved information on goods delivery, uh, invoicing details, settlement expectations, and uh, as I was saying, real-time information on the movement of cash, but also real-time information on how uh, how goods are progressing throughout their life cycle. Um, but it's all about quality data, to my mind, um, because even now, using bad data will lead to poor decisions on working capital. So understanding the data that is being seen uh, and being inputted to the the technology is, is 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 key because um, we need to be we need to be accurate so they get a good flow of uh, information. E-commerce will definitely change this uh, as well because e-commerce allows data to be consumed uh, quickly at the point of uh, order, the point of demand, and that can be fed right the way through the order cycle and to the treasurer in terms of overall uh, information. Again, as long as your systems and your data is giving the right level of information that a treasurer can uh, actively use. Because if he doesn't got the right data, it could actually disrupt the supply chain in terms of incorrect planning for when pay cycles are incorrect or poor invoice management means that the forecasting is not as strong as it perhaps could be if the data quality was of a good standard. You mentioned AI and blockchain, and they can certainly help, but they're not a single solution. Um, because to, we really need to see that all parties with involved with an end-to-end -end value chain um, are actually using this uh, in, in full. Otherwise, blockchain can have its uh, data security uh, benefits, but it won't necessarily solve the holistic problem without all parties being involved. If we look at the 
financial supply chain. There we do see some examples of DLT, um, but uh, as I say, it offers uh, a window to a sort of end-to-end -end transaction rather than that the whole uh, holistic solution. And in fact, we often see that there is a lot of discussion around the use of blockchain, um, but we also find that you know, these days still singular databases and shared databases are still the way forward for a lot of the solutions we see. I think we will still continue to see uh, DLT as, as part of the solutions, but the emphasis is about digitization more than use of actual solutions, because everyone wants to remove the amount of paper that we see in supply chains and in you know, associated documentation for financial uh, aspects. Next, I want to touch on the key challenges in this shift to technology. Marion, why has it been slow for some companies? Um, what are companies' biggest concerns here? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge is this decision of uh, having a one-size-fits-all system that can tick all the different requirements across the departments and, and things that need to be covered by systems. And on the other hand, having various systems that might be more agile and flexible, but then there is the need to link all these different systems. In, in the past, most MNCs that for sure had the big ERP system implementations, but we all know how how um, labor intense these are and how many upgrades come. And um, that, that's what made it slow and also very costly. Nowadays, everything is in the cloud. It's definitely all the new systems are in the cloud. And all the, the big ERP systems have changed their approach. But still, companies need to migrate from old to new world in, in terms of systems. So I think there is no one size fits, fits all for some companies one large system provider that can tick all the boxes is the perfect solution. But for companies that are slightly smaller, those solutions are usually too costly and they still tend to go for various systems to, to help them. And there are more and more tools on the market now as well in terms of consolidating these, these different systems. So no perfect solution, I would say. It, it depends very much on, on the company, but this has made, made it so, so slow. Steve, is there anything you'd like to add there? Yes, um, I, I think I would agree with what Marion is saying. I think the thing I would also perhaps comment on is the fact that we do see corporates really starting to think about their skill sets for some of this. So we heard a lot from Marion around the, the challenges of the use of technology. But of course, technology is needing and, and consumes lots of data. So we're seeing a, a move to making sure that a corporate has the right resource and skill set uh, to adapt their technology and really think about what does data mean and ha have you got the right data analytics uh, resource to help you use uh, the technology in the right fashion. And if I may add one last element, um, Sarah, I think uh, one piece that also delayed things was this whole question about systems that are cloud-based and versus a local installation. For a long time, there were concerns around cloud-based systems, which didn't help on the speed and agility of moving towards the new world. Could you outline the importance of a digital strategy coming from board level and having it agreed across an organization? What is the role of Treasury in creating the right company culture to drive this kind of change? Marion? Yeah, I think it goes back to what we discussed in, in the beginning. Treasury is, is not a department anymore that can work in, in isolation. I mean, working in isolation has never been good, right? But now with, with the business becoming the driver for change, Treasury needs to adapt. And, and that leads also to the best strategy around how is digitization lift in a company. It needs to be part of the company's culture and DNA indeed. And it needs to come down from, from board level as it touches the business on, on, on becoming more agile, becoming faster. So it doesn't only touch the payment flows or the financial streams, it also touches how the company is, is selling and how the company is digitizing the products they sell. So it has a very broad scope, I, I would say. And, and then coming back slightly to, to Treasury, Treasury alone can't move the needle. They need resources um, from, from the board in terms of people and also in terms of money to move to more agile processes, more automated processes. It could touch systems. It could be resourcing. Um, it needs to come from the top to actually move the needle, I would say. Thank you, Marion.
Now for my last question. Um, could you talk about how technology is increasingly important in Treasury's ability to meet regulatory demands, such as record keeping and disclosure rules around cyber security or sustainability? Marian, I think you have thoughts on this. Yes, we had various discussions with clients around this. And I think here also digitization and automation can, can really help companies to keep up to date with, with their records. One company, for example, told me, and this has been already in the early days, some, some years ago, that they use robotics and, and automation to keep their signatures up to date, right? So they've, they've implemented just simple rules where it's triggering an automatic review and something sent to the um, to the owner that a signature needs to be updated in, in the system. So from manual to automation here is, is actually helping on, on the record keeping um, and, and also helping on, on regulatory demands. Yeah, I would, I would agree that, that, that I think it's an ever uh, changing story. We need to have uh, and see uh, uh, the the use of technology in uh, storing the data and having it readily available for all the uh, business demands. Um, and as we see cyber challenges from uh, security and, uh, and, and, and keeping the data safe, um, right up to having the data enabled for, you know, whether it be for tax, for local regulation reporting, um, it's there, the data is there. Um, and it's how we can utilize that to, so it's not taking up a lot of time to uh, create reports, but use that data, use, uh, use it efficiently because the data is there. Absolutely. Thank you, Steve and Marion, for such an informative conversation on how technology is transforming Treasury. Thanks, Sarah, for having us. Yes, thanks, Sarah. Enjoy the conversation. You've been listening to Standard Chartered Steve Pearman, Head of Cash Product UK, and Marion Reuter, Regional Head of Transaction Banking Sales Europe. Thank you for listening to this podcast, brought to you by Treasury Today and Standard Chartered. Thank you to both Steve and Marion for such an informative conversation on how technology is transforming Treasury. Don't forget to subscribe to the Treasury Today podcast channel to get further episodes in this series, including how Treasury can integrate sustainability, particularly in corporate supply chains. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts.